Oh, good morning, everybody. It's a new day. It's a new market. Thanksgiving was fantastic. Thank you so much for all of you guys who uh, sent happy Thanksgiving. So that was fantastic. Uh, let's see here what we've got going on. For some reason, it doesn't want to pick up my dashboard. There we go. Sounds better. Um, let's go down to turn this off here and head down to the browser um, and we want this one I'm um, thinking maybe not that let's see um, <laughs> we want do to do 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 good morning do 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 um okay uh we want to get rid of this we want to go here Normally I have this set up. I know that you guys can see margin call there. That's fantastic. There we go. All right. Um, it's going to be a big day. Uh, we did get some great news from uh, ACRX. They got upgraded by um, Zax. Uh, Zax likes what they're seeing over there, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, the more that we see ACRX get these kind of bigger players hopping onto it, the better that's going to be. Um, Price-wise, it hasn't really changed very much. People still have it around $4. Uh, Pre-market, it's up to $04. Uh, I think that we continue to see this thing go, especially up to and into earnings. So uh, we'll be watching ACRX there. Uh, portfolio. Got up to uh, three and a half stars here, guys. Out of the 190,000, we are almost breaking that 50,000 mark. Just a little bit more, just a little more squeeze, and we'll be there. Uh, you can see this month, SPY performing at three and a half percent. My portfolio is up almost 16% on the month. Um, so going well. Am I still bullish on ALNA? Yeah, I am. I am bullish on it, and the only reason why is because when you see a bio stock like this, um, now, that being said, guys, I'm not bullish immediately on ALNA. I think there's still some biodegradation to happen, but as I check the biofarm calendar, if we go here, uh, I know today's the Apple event, guys. I am not going to live stream the Apple event, but I know that Martini is. So I will be sending you guys over to Martini. Um, yeah, so as soon as I see ALNA pop up on here, I'll start to consider entering a position on it for sure. Um, what is up? Good day, good day, good day. If you guys have stocks that you want me to take a look at, please throw them in chat. I'm gonna go get a glass of water here and see what we can see before the market opens. Uh, we'll be looking at Apple today, of course, on the run-up. Gonna be taking a look at space as we head into the launch next week. Um, there was some SpaceX news that dropped, so hopefully that will drive it a little bit more. Um, politics, as always, are there for us to take a look at should we get uh, bored or distracted. Uh, there's not a ton of stuff that I'm seeing that's really blowing my mind this morning. I think the market is pretty much holding their breath with anticipation on this Apple event. So uh, let me know in chat, guys, what your thoughts are on the Apple event that's upcoming. I will be right back.
the heck is me? Uh, that's a great question, Crimson. I'm going to start with the disclaimer on the day, guys. I had a few people asking, you know, aren't you worried about offering financial advice? I'm not offering financial advice. Uh, for all of you watching on whatever platform you're watching on, none of this is financial advice. I am a trader. I make my own trades. All that we do here is we read what's here. Um, I provide kind of my thoughts on that. It's not advice. It's just my opinion of what I'm reading. I can be completely wrong. Uh, it's completely possible. So um, I'm never going to give you guys individual instruction as to what you would do with it. But in the event that I was holding Apple calls, uh, I'm not. Uh, I, I took a different play on Apple. I'm playing LPL. But if I was holding Apple calls, uh, typically what we've seen is as soon as the event starts, most of these stocks go up. We saw this with NVIDIA. We saw it with AMD. I expect to see something similar with Apple today. It's going to go right up. I would probably wait for that. The event has started. It goes up. And before they say anything, I'm out. That's what I would do um, if I was holding a position in Apple. Now, with LPL, I am taking a much longer term uh, play. Uh, I'm holding LPL into February, uh, April of next year, waiting on their Q4 results on iPhone sales. Um, which I'm making the assumption that Apple is announcing the iPhone today. Um, I, I think that <laughs> if they don't if they don't announce the iPhone today, guys, uh, it's going to be a bit of a, a nightmare for sure. Um, turn Texas blue. Okay, um, the odds of the odds of Texas going blue are. Zero. Now, what I do find telling, guys, is this is a clear indication of where this be at. Yeah, if they don't drop the iPhone today, that's going to be an excellent, excellent uh, position for anybody that was playing the other side of this, that they were looking at um, more so the... Okay, so this is about Fauci. Any insight on the space tip yesterday? I think that it, there's just no news, uh, to be honest. And as long as space stayed above that 20 line, I was still really happy with it. Um, and it did. Um, Pre-market, it's still 2052. I, For me, this little dip is not a big deal. Um, we look at it over five days. Um, it's coming down from a near 22. Uh, but we look at it on the month, and we're still quite high. Uh, so I'm okay with space. Um, I don't think so. Uh, so when we look at, um, when you look at the other events that we've seen going into Q4, morning guys, morning, good morning, good morning. Um, yeah, if they, it, 5G is going to be a bit of a conversation, but my thought with Apple is this guys, we saw AMD and we saw in the video both drop their Q4 offerings. Uh, and when they dropped, the, the products looked amazing, especially NVIDIA. NVIDIA just knocked it out of the park. It looked amazing. But even NVIDIA declined as soon as the announcement happened into the end of the day, simply because the hype into a run-up on this, right, by the rumor, sell the news, has been a long-standing uh, comment in the trading community. It, it always 
comes to pass that hype is so huge leading up to an event, but then people go, okay, and now we get out on that hype. Uh, well, at least smart money gets out on that hype. They let it come back down. And then as we head into Q4 and people are forgotten about the announcement, they're focused on the, the latest play of the day, the YOLO that they can get into, um, the big money gets back in at a lower price uh, heading into Q4 results. Um, so yeah, I, I would expect there to be a spike into the call today, and then we'll see a decline through the rest of the day back down to reasonable numbers. Uh, if they don't announce the iPhone today, I expect to see a meteoric drop, um, like an atom bomb going off. Of just down she goes. Um, and then if, if they do announce the iPhone, you'll see a brief uptick and then a decline into the end of the day. So uh, for those of you that like to play the options, uh, in my opinion, at the peak, watch for the peak uh, at the start of the event. And if they announce the iPhone at the gate, let it run a little bit and potentially there's a, a, a put play against it or a short play against it. Yeah, I, I mean, they could be announcing a 5G compatibility. I don't know why they would hold a second event if they didn't have the iPhone ready. I, I'm there with you. I am definitely there with you. Um, so you see space pre-market. It's up a little bit. Um, I'm still doing quite well on space. Uh, for all of you here that have been tracking along, um, we, we got another half star uh, up to three and a half. How much does it really drop after events like this? Hold on. I'll show you. Um, Do, 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 do. To the big sheet. To the big sheet. Do, do, do. NVIDIA. Do, do, do. Mm, let's break it down over the last month by hour. Sure. Um, <laughs> and then when was the NVIDIA event? NVIDIA event it was their 30 september 1st okay so 901 we got to go back further than this we got to go back to was it really that long ago it couldn't have been that long ago man time flies it was it was september 1st okay um Okay, so here it is, guys. Here's the announcement. Uh, is it going to let me go to our? No. Ah. I want to scroll back. I wish there were a way. Uh, there's got to be a way to do it. For Metagus? No, you can link it. Let me take a look at it. Um, all right, so we, we can't see it flat out. Um, but on the day, guys, the, the peak on this candle for NVIDIA was 5.59, and the close was 5.52. So there was about a $7 drop from the peak at the event down to the close. Uh, the following day, it did pump up because people decided they liked the event. But as far as the YOLO, uh, the play on the day, that's, that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, Yeah, that's the EU market. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know, Metagus. Um, it's the EU market. I'm not as hot on that. Um, if we go to AMD's event, that was more recent. I think we can probably see an hourly on AMD's event. Um, uh, one month by the hour. I believe this is the day of the event. Uh, so here would be the... Uh, run up to the event. People knew the event was coming as of the 25th. They got in, they wrote it up, day of the event, and we see the decline. So, uh, what I suspect that we see is something very similar to this chart is going to be more. Uh, what Apple looks like if they don't blow people's minds with the iPhone today, uh, it's going to have this decline, but it'll be a much sharper decline. I think it would probably come down to about 10 bucks. Um, now, if we look at NVIDIA, uh, this was a really positive one. So what we saw was uh, September 1st, 
We saw an initial spike the following day. So it was just like Apple, you would see it come up uh, and then we would see it come down and then it's going to slowly buy itself back up. So like I said, big money, right? Big money rides us up to the event and then they're out. They get back in. They ride it up. Logically, would LPL be a, a sell as well? Uh, no. So it's not a direct play, right? It's a peripheral. So what we're not seeing here is a massive lead up to the event. Uh, there's a slight buy up to around the $7 range, but you can see here that LPL was up around that range by itself. So this isn't really running huge on Apple. Um, this is definitely getting a little bit of a pump for those people that know that LPL is tied to Apple. For me, um, the entry I've got on LPL is... 676. Uh, so right now LPL is up around 692. Uh, 676 was around here. So this line here, this line here. Um, for me, regardless of what happens at this event, this will go up. But uh, into next year, if we look at the last two years, bah, 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 bah. Uh, so here they are uh, entering in October. Uh, by January, they're up here. Uh, entry into October. By January, they're up here. So again, I'm not going to play through earnings. I'm going to play up to earnings uh, and just get up. And I'll take whatever the gain is. It looks like on average, if you were to enter October here, uh, 773 up here around the peak, right before they drop their earnings, it goes up to $9. So, you know, like 25%. Uh, I'm a Canadian. Uh, so we drink, I, I don't really drink a ton of milk. I get my calcium from cheese more than I get from milk. Uh, again, guys, my opinion. Um, now back to uh, the brief celebration that we were having over this. Um, the way that they decide their stars, uh, I don't have the complete details as to how they assess their, their rankings here, guys. Um, what I do know is that it seems to have a mix of current holding performance as well as, um, as well as close earnings. Uh, so what we're seeing here on the chart, for those of you that are new here, uh, in May, I started using the tool. Uh, what I didn't realize is, and I was like, oh, I'll just enter all my positions from the entire year, right? I'll just put everything in that way. It's all caught up. Well, what I failed to realize is my entering and exiting all of those positions in the same day had me show up for a massive loss, when in reality it wasn't a loss. I'll show you the actual portfolio uh, after this, but every month since I've either been even or I beat the spy. Even, beat the spy, beat the spy. Um, so really that's my target. I'm not really looking to crush the average tip ranks portfolio. What I'm looking to do is, am I crushing the market? Uh, that That's the big one. So um Yeah, I mean, for me, the issue is if I were to drink a glass of milk this big, you get the same amount of calcium out of this uh, from a brick of cheese about this big, just like a little cube of cheese. So I would just crush the, the cube of cheese. Um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy. The 12 month return here looks interesting. Um, but when you take into account that at the start of the year, uh, we... I started this account at the start of the year. Uh, when COVID came in, I thought the marketing industry would take a bit of a dip. Uh, public speaking, I knew it was going to be right about right out the window, right? Um, uh, so I started the year with $3,000 Canadian, which is about $2,200 US. Uh, as of right now, portfolio is up around um, $3,200 US, or thirty two grand US. So I think that that equates to, let's just make sure the math all adds up, right? 3,000 CAD to USD, so 2,280, uh, and then 31,800 divided by 2,280. Yeah, so I'm up almost 1,400% on the year. Um, Yeah, no. 
Yeah, about 1,400% for the year is, is what I'm up right now. So we'll see how it finishes the year. I am still in LPL. I'm not getting out before the Apple event today. I'm going to carry LPL right into uh, January. Uh, and that was one of the things I was just showing on the chart there, guys. Uh, traditionally, uh, LPL, when you're watching it, an October entry into a January position is quite strong. Um, let's see if I can go back 10 years. Okay, 10 years by the month. Okay, let's see here. October. Uh, so if I took an October entry here, even at the high, it would have been eleven dollars. By January, it goes up to thirteen. Uh, October of this year, the high would have been fifteen. Uh, into January, this year would have been fourteen seventy four. So this would have been a slight loss this year, the two thousand thirteen year. Um, in this one, October uh, would have been fifteen. Uh, by January, it would have been fifteen ninety two. So small gain here, October. Uh, into January, uh, it stayed about the same this year. October uh, into January, small gain. October into January, gain. Uh, this one here was 1387 to 1588. Uh, here, October would have been 867 into January. Uh, I guess they had their earnings in February this year, so. Uh, either way, 929.958, so that's not a bad little gain. Again, here, October, uh, high of 589 into January, uh, 714. So again, guys, uh, you're looking at this and it's like, okay, well, that's not really that huge, right? Uh, but for me, the way that we're looking at this is, okay, if this is only... Um, you know, you know, get in, get in on the high, the absolute worst, right? Let's let's assume that you don't get a good entry, and you've got the absolute worst. You get in at six twenty six, and then by January, this thing goes up to seven fourteen, right? Okay, you, people are like, so what? You're making a dollar a share, all right? Like, you're making a dollar a share. That's true, but a dollar a share on a six dollar stock, right, is a sixth of the. Right, and let's say that I've got you know three grand in there, right? That's five hundred bucks. I'll take that. Is that right? That math right? So my entry this year. Oh no, I don't want stock puts. I want stock calc. All right, uh, let's say that I have, let's use actual position here. Uh, LPL, 330 shares at 676. Let's say the sell price goes to 850. My commission is seven. My sell is seven. Calculate. Yeah, profit's about 500 bucks. I'll take 500 bucks. Thousand percent or bust. <laughs> um, on WBA, I think it's a strong buy the dip coming into winter and with people having a COVID, we'll think it's a flu, vice versa, so they want medicine either way. WBA. Okay. Uh, market is open. Walgreens. Uh, I like Rite Aid better. That's my immediate thought on this. I did a breakdown of all of these. Um, I did a breakdown of all of these kind of retailers that do uh, the medicines and whatnot. And for me, looking at Walgreens versus Rite Aid, I, I like Rite Aid better, I think. Um so right now, I, I see what you're saying, though, where you're like, look, okay, we had the dip. Um, it came down to uh, 34 at the low. Uh, this thing used to be up around the $60 mark. So, you know, you could potentially double up into flu season. No, not 7% commission, $7. Um, I didn't see the Hindenburg tweet. I will take a look at that. I'm coming back from a long weekend, guys, so I didn't do a ton of research uh, heading in today, 
Uh, I actually slept in this morning because I enjoyed last night's football game so much. Uh, so with Rite Aid, guys, uh, for an equity play, you just get a larger position because it's 974. Uh, right now it's at 974 uh, pre-COVID. It actually went up to about 20 bucks. Uh, so for me, this is the bigger play. Double up on it. This would be the one I'm looking at. Uh, the Saints game. Went into overtime, actually. I wasn't able to, to finish the game. I was so exhausted. Do, 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 do. Okay, don't forget, guys, we do have the, uh, the Supreme Court today. Uh, that's still happening. kind of a big deal let's head over to the watch list and see what is going on uh apples down here a little bit of profit taking out the gate guys uh but into the actual event spies down a little bit Had a nice big run yesterday, though, up to that 353. So we'll see what happens here. Blackberry's looking good. IPix is looking good. LPL is looking good. Side Eye's up a little bit. Uh, who are the big losers here? See, ALNA, guys, biodegradation. This is what I'm talking about. If we look at this over six months, um, you know, it peaked around $3 and it's come down to $1.53. I expect it to come back down to this dollar mark. If it does come down to that dollar mark, I'll probably take a look at it. Um, can't believe Nicholas is still at 24. Uh, who else we got here? Waiter. Good morning. Uh, Westport's continuing to do quite well. I'd like it to stay above that $2 mark, ideally. I'm um, keeping my eyes on Mattel still. Anox, guys, this is a potential short play. I'm going to wait and see what happens there. Uh, with that, the Spy doesn't really know what it wants to do. It doesn't look like it particularly wants to hold the gains. The big one that I'm watching, guys, in the Supreme Court is ET. ET is the pipeline. Um, I, I think that this is a pretty solid entry over six months at $6. Um, I will potentially be taking a look at that uh, for a hold into the Supreme Court ruling on pipelines. Um, WPRT continues to do well, though. Uh, space, as we move into the next week, as long as it stays above this $20 line, I'm a pretty happy guy. Um, Uh, DGLY is looking good. SPAC, guys, this is a Fisker play. That's why I still have that up there. AMD, I can take off this chart. I don't really care about it. Um, GameStop coming down from that pump. You should make your own decision. I, the due diligence I've given you guys on the Apple event is traditionally these things trend upwards into the event and then they drop. So yesterday when, it, I mean, if we go back to yesterday, this thing was down at 119, right? So let's say you got into a call at the start of the week. Right now, you'd be up. I think that we see this go back up to 125, up for the event. Uh, possibly if they drop the iPhone, uh, it'll go up to 127, 128, and then it will decline. And then tomorrow we might see another pump on it, depending on what the news is. But uh, big news this week is the Supreme Court after this Apple phone thing. So um, that'll probably be more what I'm watching. LPL is just kind of doing its own thing here, making a little bit of money for me. On the day ACRX is down, fell below the $2 line. So uh, this has been doing quite well for me. I'm pretty happy with the position. 
Uh, it is down on the day, which is fine. Uh, same thing with space, it is declined. But next week, next week, Outset Medical. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at Outset Medical. What's the ticker? On. No, I disagree. I I think it's going to go back up to 125 right before the event and then we see it go to 127 on news of the phone and then run <laughs> run for the hills yeah i was just watching it um are you waiting for news on ac or x or what's the catalyst to profit higher uh earnings their earnings will be the next big thing and then military orders and then the following quarter's earnings as well uh, I still have a price target of around ten dollars on ACRX. Um, it, if they can show that they have a successful opioid, that's having a, an approved FDA drug uh, where you're you're making you know anywhere from eight to ten million dollars in sales quarterly. Uh, th that's where that stock belongs. Um, if you're making eight to ten million quarterly on a single designation drug that you have orange book patents for the next decade on, uh, and your major market, your major buyers, the U.S. D Department of Defense. Uh, yeah, for me, ACRX at 10 is reasonable. Um, so with OM, at its peak from the last year, it hit 60. Base of the U.S., I'm okay with that. Dialysis. Uh, COVID does have a liver, possible liver condition tied to it. So. <coughs> I don't know that dialysis is a terrible play. Uh, it's a bit of an outlier play. As far as recovery, though, this thing hasn't really... Now, this only has a chart as of... this Was, was this a SPAC? I'm wondering if this was a SPAC here. Because it doesn't seem to have anything. It only IPO'd. Okay, so bio IPOs stay, re I stay really far away from for a long time. Um, most bio IPOs tank, just tank. They're going to go back down to that, that $10, $15 mark until they've got something that actually works. Uh, yeah, bio IPOs I stay really far away from. Um, Blue Origin is testing right now. Blue Origin. Wow, my typing hands are drunk. Go home. Do you have a link to the Blue Origin thing? Okay, uh, I can't watch that, but uh, just because I don't want to lose monetization over on YouTube, but let's see what space does with that. Space is already making a climb back up, so... That there is some space news seems to be positive for it. Um, space. So here it is yesterday, slight decline, uh, and now we're seeing it come back up. Again, 
I just wanted it over the $20 line. So guys, I'm going to be live till about 10.30 today, and then I have things to take care of. It's after a long weekend. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to take care of today, so uh, as far as actual business and work. Uh, so let's see what we do. Um, to buy the dip. So again, guys, I'm going to repeat. Uh, my FA on Apple is, this is a people profit taking on yesterday's rise. I think we see it go back up to that 125-ish line uh, before the event. I think on news of the... Um, iPhone, you're going to see it run to around the 127, 128 line, and then we're going to see it decline into the end of the day from that high. Um, it'll probably finish around 124. Uh, that's my thoughts on that. If they drop the iPhone. If they don't drop the iPhone, it'll run up to 125 per event. If they don't announce the iPhone, this thing will fall back down to 115, uh, and anybody who had puts is going to look like a genius. Um, that's kind of my thoughts on, on where we are with Apple uh, on this event. I'm not. I'm not going to stream it. I'm going to hang out with you, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to stream it on my channel. You know me. I would just sit there making fun of Apple anyway. <laughs> now announcing fifteen colors for the new iPhone. Bye 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 bye. Of course, before the election, the new option of blue is available. Shocker. <laughs> is it is it Democrat blue, though? Oh, I don't know they want to associate with Nicola. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not in it really either way. I've got my LPL play that I, I was just reviewing that this morning. And like LPL into, uh, you guys are going to be hot mic here for a second so people can hear what you're saying. Um, LPL into, uh, can now they can hear you, but you couldn't before. Um, yeah, guys, it's Martini and the whole gang on the mic there. Everybody's super excited for this. Ooh, Ghost Orb with the, sub, the Prime sub. Thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, LPL for me, I was looking at their last 10 years, and it's like, get it in October, hold it until wherever their earnings is, just before earnings in January, February, and it goes up almost every single year. There was only one year where it went down, but it definitely wasn't a year when the iPhone launched. Uh, so for me, it's like, okay, I'll just, I'm, I'm happy holding LPL. I might actually increase my position in LPL before the end of the month, take some of my space money and, and put it into LPL. Cause it, it looks like it consistently is going to give anywhere from 15 to 20% three months, which is, I mean, I have to start learning that I'm not going to 10x on every play, right? I have to start looking for those ones that are 20, 30, 40% wins. You're not going to what on every play? 10x. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna see a thousand percent gain on every play. You don't right now, do you? No, but that's always the dream. Is like, oh, it's gonna do this, right? This is where it's gonna go. The only 10x I've ever had is holding it long. <sighs> Ipix is the only one that I'm seriously looking at that has that potential to 10x on Q4. Maybe, maybe ACRX. Maybe. I, I it would have to go. <laughs> it would have to really fly, though. Who knows, though? They come out with a massive, ridiculous number like $10 million in sales this quarter. Who knows? Uh, bah, 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 bah. So, Supreme Court. Were you guys watching that yesterday? Has that been a total. No. No? Nobody was watching it? Nobody cares? Like the excerpt by Biden that voters don't deserve to know his stance on it. He didn't say that. Really? Yeah, he did. He said voters don't deserve to know how I stand on it. Let me find the exact quote. Yeah, please. I really? <laughs> Let's 
All, all I hear in that statement is, I'm scared of alienating my religious backing. Because if I go after this lady, the only thing the Democrats have been mudslinging is that she's a Christian. Uh, would you believe a Forbes article being yep. reliable enough? Yep. Okay. I believe Forbes. They're a business magazine. They actually have to verify their sources or they get in deep crap. Um, launch date on space is the 22nd. Go Storm. I hate that it's come down to the fact that we have to say. Would you trust this journalism? Mm -hmm. Would I... you? Yeah. Do you trust the CNN article? No, I do not. Do you trust this Fox News article? No, I do not. Do you trust the National Enquirer? Yes, I do. At least they verify their sources. <laughs> Jim Bob from the Bayou says he saw an alien with 12 heads giving birth to a baby. Well, I bet you they still got the source. You can go talk to Jim Bob. Good. Oh, come on. Like, what? You want to be the president of the country. What are you thinking? Yeah, are you reading the second paragraph of it? Well, sir, don't the voters deserve to know? And in which he gets interrupted by Biden. No, they don't deserve. Before asserting, I'm not going to play Trump's game. He'd love that to be the discussion instead of what he's doing now. <laughs> you just played into his game. Congrats. <laughs> like, no, that can't be you your answer. CNN. Yeah, no, when you have CNN, uh, Biden and Harris should answer it, CNN, Jake Tapper said. <laughs> and CNA, CNN is uh, ridiculing you for not answering a question. Well, I mean, no answer is a yes. You take it right. to the affirmative. Like, the... The, the way that that psychology works is, oh, a politician doesn't want to answer the question. Well, then it, their answer is the worst possible outcome, right? So nobody wants to say that the Democrats are planning to pack the court. So they're just going to increase from 9 to 15. Um, and then they're going to make sure that the other uh, six that they put on there are, are Democrat or left-leaning Supreme Court justices. They don't want to say that. So the best way to not say it is, I don't, I'm not going to answer that question. It's like, the hell you aren't. Mm -hmm. The filibuster is hilarious because it, it's not going to stop the Senate. The vote is happening on Friday. <laughs> like, it, it, it's happening. You can filibuster all you want Monday through Thursday as we're having commentary and interviews, but when it comes to Friday and it's the date of the vote, your filibuster is going to get knocked out of the water. There is no way. Um, let's see. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Hmm. Man, what the heck is the Biden party thinking? That... Nobody in their right mind is going to say that that looks, that looks good on him, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It might not look good on him, but like from our perspective, but they're going to swing it. If you're that deranged on that side, like, you will just only listen to the good, not the bad. It's, uh, what was it? Um, I, I equate it to basically being on the same level as like those Apple sickle fans that like were saying, oh yeah, Apple has superior tech and all this other shit, but. I mean, they're, they're using old tech. They're just marketing as, like, something new. 
So the big thing that it looks like the Democrats want to hit her on is Roe v. Wade. What's a filibuster? It's when uh, a politician starts a, we'll call it a speech. It's not really a speech. It's just the ability to talk as long as you can possibly talk. You can't sit down. You can't stop talking. And you just talk. And you talk and you talk and you talk in the hopes that you draw out enough time that they can't get a vote in on the day. And then it goes to the next day and you've had your day of rest or you had your, your sleep that night and you try to talk. And you just try to stall it out long enough that eventually a timeline passes that makes it impossible to get the thing through. Uh, the reality is we're only in October. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Roe v. Wade is what they want to get her on. Um, Vix is climbing today. So it looks like in 92, Supreme Court revisited and modified the Roe v. Wade ruling. And I think that this is something that she can just lean into of the Supreme Court has reviewed this in the past and already made changes. So constitutionally, if it were to come up, it would be a matter of returning to the due process clause of the 14th Amendment and really understanding what that means from a constitutional point of view. And she would rule on it from then. Um, I don't know that she needs to go into detail beyond that, because until they examine the case, there's no reason for her to examine the case. Um, I wonder if she has a stance already legally as far as this goes. I know religiously she does, but as far as... Barrett has never ruled directly on abortion, but she did vote to rehear a successful challenge to India's parental notification law. She voted against striking down another Indiana law requiring burial or cremation of fetal remains. Both cases, Barrett voted with the minority. The Supreme Court later reinstated the law. She did support a bubble law in Chicago. That's interesting for, for somebody who's supposed to be so religious nut job, right? That's that's an interesting stance for her to take. The the bubble ordinance that they're talking about, guys, is the idea that uh there used to be people that would go right outside of clinics and yell at the the women that were going into the clinics. Um, and several cities passed bubble laws saying that within this area around the clinic, you can't be there with signs, pickets, uh, advertising. You can't be yelling at people. You can't be, uh, you can't be doing a free speech rally within a certain bubble around these, these Planned Parenthood clinics or any of the other clinics that perform the abortions. Um, so Barrett here actually upheld the decision saying bubble or ordinances need to be in place. Um, they have to be in place. Which is kind of interesting to see. Uh, obviously, she's strong on Second Amendment. We expect that. Uh, she's strong on Fourth Amendment. What's ACRX doing? Yeah, it's down a little today, but it it's still it it's looking tasty with Zach's on it. 
Did you see that yesterday, Martini? That Zach's put a bullish rating out on uh, ACRX. I mean, I yeah, I just don't pay attention to people upgrading or downgrading things. I never have. I never found it useful. I mean, little tiny guys. I'm with you. Like millennial says that this is gonna do well. Who cares? But when some of the bigger boys drop their name on it. Do I like this lady for a Supreme Court judge? Uh, I mean, she's she's seen a significant amount of cases in her appellate court. Uh, she's well qualified. The bar actually came out. Um, so the, the U.S. Bar Association, guys, is the one that kind of oversees um, any lawyer, uh, judge included. Uh, so this is the news that dropped. I guess this was yesterday. Yeah. So the American Bar Association association rated her as well qualified for the position so it, this is similar to when we watch the the covid announcements right i don't want to hear what trump has to say about medicine i don't want to hear what pence has to say about medicine i don't want to hear what uh pelosi or schumer has to say about medicine i want to hear it from one of the physicians that's working in virology or immunology i want to hear from somebody that knows what they're talking about right the american bar association would be the pinnacle of that right they would be the pinnacle of that. They are the ones that know the industry the best. They know who is well suited to be in the position. For for them to say that she is well qualified for the position, in my mind, okay, that's good enough for me. A substantial majority of the standing committee determined that she is well qualified, and a minority of a minority of it is of the opinion that she is qualified. So, it, there wasn't even a minority that came out and said that she's disqualified that she should not be in the position. There was a minority that said that she is only qualified, not well-qualified. So picture like a five-tier spectrum of uh, well-qualified, qualified, indifferent, not qualified, completely unqualified, right? Um, where, you know, completely unqualified would be me. Um, perfectly qualified would be uh, Moses with the Ten Commandments handed down from on high, creating law in the first place. Okay, and somewhere in the middle, you've got real people. Um, so well qualified for me is, is probably a pretty good place. Um, she will fuck minorities and immigrants over. Uh, I mean, I would like anybody in, in Chicago or anywhere that's, that's having an opinion of how she will rule on things to actually take a look at where she's ruled on those cases before, which is what we're doing. Thanksgiving was amazing blader, but I think if you go to her case history, uh, she did rule on immigration. So there was a circuit split regarding the ability for green card non-citizens to have government benefits. She dissented saying that, uh, no, but it's important to break it down. So as far as immigration goes, she's saying uh, she was split with a decision um, made on immigration where um, people who have illegally obtained a green card and are non-citizens of the U.S. should not have government benefits. She doesn't feel that or her ruling on it was that there shouldn't be government benefits for non-citizens of the U.S. Uh, the other two judges that were ruling on it ruled that they should have access to that, um, and that it was an overreach of the executive branch to say that they shouldn't. Um, so that's, that's. I mean, I don't know if you're going to say that's in favor of immigration or opposed to immigration, but take that as you will. She's saying that if you're not a U.S. citizen, she doesn't think that you should have the U.S. government benefits uh, as a result of that. Um, in my mind, that's not really a huge leap. Uh, I, I don't know that's anti-immigration. So that's just saying if you illegally immigrate, don't expect government benefits. Um, in May 2019, court rejected a Yemeni citizen and her U.S. citizen husband's challenge to a consular officer twice deny her visa application. U.S. citizen argued that this had deprived him of the constitutional right to live in the United States with a spouse and a 2-1 majority opinion authored by Barrett. Court held that the plaintiff's claim was properly dismissed under the doctrine.
Okay, so in this one, there was a guy who wanted to bring his wife over from Yemen to the U.S. She couldn't get a passport. He claimed that that was a constitutional infringement of his rights. Uh, there was a 2-1 majority opinion against him, so the wife was not able to come to the U.S. Um, it was never reheard. So um, that's all that we really have as far as immigration on this of uh there was some reason why she had been denied her application and she refused yeah i mean is that a constitutional right that you have the right to live with your spouse in the u.s these are those big tough questions that supreme court justices get asked <laughs> and other degens like me don't have to answer. Especially Canadian degens. It should be a right. I mean, so what if Osama bin Laden's wife lived in New York City and under her constitutional rights, Osama also should be able to come live in the States? Would that be that would be okay? So now you just have to find people that may be ISIS tied, get them married to an American. Imagine as a Canadian scooping a hot Czech blonde but can't bring her over. I mean, I, I'm not saying that that's right, and they're not saying that she can't come over. They're just saying that you need to have, you have to go through the proper steps in order to make that happen. She doesn't just get to come in because she married me. Um, I don't know that I'm... Canada's got a different immigration policy. We've got this thing called meritocracy, um, where you you have to show the merit of you entering the country. You can't just enter the country because you want to. What's the PT on ACRX? Uh, I mean, over nine thousand. It's over nine thousand, apparently. Um, oh, here we go again. Wait, uh, what? There's there's the analyst PT. Uh, that's, there are currently four analysts on this, uh, and Zax isn't on here cause they didn't give a price target. They, they're just bullish on it. Um, the average is 428, the high is seven. Uh, my personal PT on it, and this is just my opinion is somewhere from eight to 10. Um, but we shall see what we shall see. I got to tell you though, this guy from credit Suisse is really dragging this down. This Evan Seigerman guy, um, he, he and I are going to have words. <laughs> 84 cents on ACRX. Forty nine percent success rate. Get on my level, Evan Sigerman. The three point six million dollar contract that they got was an RFP, so it's a request for proposal. Uh, if you've ever worked with the government, you're quite familiar with that. Essentially, the government says we want to do something. Uh, we have to make a public offering saying, okay, everybody can submit to this request for proposal. But oftentimes what will happen is the request for proposal will be written in such a way as it sets an outline that only very specific companies can enter it. So we're looking for a drug that does this, 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 this. And they make it very specific what the request for proposal is. And essentially the RFP that the army put out was so specific that the only drug that met all the requirements was Desuvia, was ACRX's drug. So nobody else could really submit to it. Even the other companies out there like Pfizer that make opioids looked at it and went, we don't have a drug that does what they want it to do here. They want a, they want a sublingual drug that kicks in in this time frame that lasts this long, that can be measured, that can be a single dose administration. We don't have that. Um, the reason why that 3.6 3 million isn't a huge contract, the reason why it's a big deal is because that RFP is looking to eliminate fentanyl entirely from the US Army. They don't want to use fentanyl anymore, which cuts Pfizer's fentanyl lollipops out of the military. Um, apparently, uh, feeding soldiers candy that's doped with opioids uh, gets them addicted. <laughs> Go figure. Um, And that's really that's really the big thing that that they're concerned with with this is rip spy. Oh, Martini, what'd you do to the spy? Because I have the power to change spy. Yep. Okay. 
Stock, stock mom has all power. Yeah, okay, whatever. Make Spy go back up, Martini. Tell it to go back up. Yeah, pray to your spaghetti gods in the sky. Ask, ask the TA to help you. There's, there's only one god, man. And he doesn't dress well, like that. if you that. look at the EMAs, we're getting to a cross divergence of interest here. All right, guys, so I'm going to pull up the lines here, and Millennial's going to do TA. Are we ready? Is everybody ready? Here we go. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hold on. Uh, view <laughs> options, indicators. I, I mean, I do I just want to... was in chat. I, I... I did the gif of the C. <laughs> okay, so... We we need the Bollinger Bands for sure, right? Those are important, and then we need we definitely want our first. The ball okay, so Bollinger's a real map. Um, we want our simple moving average. We want a second simple moving average. Uh, we why not just have all three, right? If you're gonna have two, why not go for three? Because more lines yeah, is better. I have four. I have four. More lines are better. Ooh, I have five EMAs on mine. Um, Plus I, VWAP. I only have three, um, but I am also going to use volume, CCI, MACD, and RSI to evaluate. So uh, oh, we have I'm to sorry, keep that I in mind. To. Yes. Yeah, got to keep that you in mind. Step your TA game up. Listen, man, I'm just a beginner. I'm going to do the best that I can. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, probability uh, ranges. Oh yeah, we definitely want probability ranges on there. Um, let let the let TD do the work for me, right? Um, okay. Is $1.90 a decent entry for ACVRX? All I would suggest for you guys is I'm not going to tell you entries. I'm not going to tell you exits. What I would say is do the due diligence on it, and you guys make an educated decision based off of that. So let's go to one day, guys, on the spy. And based off of the lines that I'm seeing here, okay, uh, we've got the CCI showing that there's positive sentiment coming in under it right now. Uh, the MACD is showing a cross to the downtrend, so I think that we're still going to see it go down a little bit. It, the RSI has it around 40, so there is potential for – oh, you guys can't see the lines. Well, that does nobody any good. There we go. We got the lines. Okay, so what we've got here is uh, decreasing volume from the open right now. So hopefully this volume would pick up. We need that to make it move, right? Um, the CCI, we see it dropped severely here and it's starting to pick up steam again. So people are looking to trade the SPY again uh, after getting out of the way of it. Uh, we do have the MACD here. We're going to wait for a cross to see it move to the upside. Once that MACD crosses, then you know that we're going to have that upward movement. Uh, the RSI is kind of low. We are below 40, so there is opportunity for this to buy back up on some positive news. Uh, let's just wait and see here. The, the probability ranges here, they're, they're looking quite good somewhere between that 351.60 and 351.20. So uh, if I'm drawing the lines on this, guys, I think we see this buy back up to that 351 50 351 60 range into the apple event and then apple's going to carry us all to glory land and take us back up to 353 um that that's what the lines are saying i think <laughs> but this is not investment advice please do not play on the <laughs> this isn't even good ta um <laughs> <laughs> okay and now you want to see the difference so the difference on this guys is um now when i actually uh i'm going to do fa on it uh don't do crap with this until the apple event and wait and see what it does to the entire market <laughs> that's the fa i would give you we have nothing else that's massive today that's gonna move this short of pelosi coming out and saying we have a new stimulus package um but i don't know how much the market is actually going to listen to anything she has to say anymore. No, no, spy. Don't fall below that level. Did you say that about me? If I can't make spy go down, then what? Then you were never going to listen to me. What? And I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So as you guys can see, my TA killed the market. <laughs> they, they, they literally went. Hey, millennial, we hear you're doing TA. Uh, here's a giant how red can candle. Wrong? Here's a giant red candle for you. How, how do your lines like me now? And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I should have stayed with the FA. And that's if I look at the spy over the last six months, we're fine. <laughs> we're okay. We went from 280 to 350 on the spy in six months. All is well in the world. Just breathe. We got a billionaire in the chat. I love it when billionaires show up. Uh, all billionaires, please make your Prime subscription a tier three. Um, I know you got the coin. You can make it happen. 
Um, so Apple event today, guys. Uh, apparently, there's this phone that Apple makes. Um, it's an overpriced, underperforming uh, piece of hardware. However, it comes in blue this year. Uh, so I'm uh, sure I'm sure they're going to make record sales on blue. Um, the rumors, rumors. Oh, it's not confirmed. No, nothing's confirmed. No, sorry. Really, you tell everybody to check their investor bias, and you can't do it on this one. I don't tell anybody to check their investor bias. You tell people to check their investor of bias. You do. <laughs> when, when it, Rita, when it comes to Apple, Get he, he, yeah, he can't. Get over yourself. For those of you that don't know, uh, Martini's the stepmom, and she keeps me grounded from being a complete degenerate. When I say something absolutely stupid, she's always there to say, you're being stupid. Um, so checking my bias, actually, I mean, I, I can use the exact same FA. Everybody that buys Apple will continue to buy Apple, irregardless of what specs they drop on this phone. That it's a new Apple phone, the Apple clan will purchase. It, it, there's no it doubt. <laughs> They will There's buy phone. The rumored colors, millennial. Ooh, rumored colors. Okay, guys. Hypothetically, which color do you think is going to sell best? Gold because of China. Gold because of China. Okay, so China likes gold. I I always go black or gray. That's just me. Once you go black, you never go back. We got one of those. Okay. <laughs> oh God. What? What? I was talking about the phone. Oh, Martini. I was talking about the phone. It has a LiDAR scanner, by the way. Oh, green because of COVID. Interesting. Green. There might be a COVID play. Green. I don't know. Midnight green color. A messed up screen again? No, that's, right that's here. That's the blue. No, that's right here. Blue. Midnight green color. It says midnight green color option. Where do you see midnight green? I'm just saying it says it right here. Similar to the midnight green oh, color okay. option. I'm not color blind. I'm color stupid. I can see the colors. I just don't know which ones they are. Hold on. I actually got to pull up your stream to see this. A new blue color is more subtle than the one seen on the iPhone 12 and i12 mini with a similar look to the midnight green color option. You know, honestly, I feel like Steve Jobs would roll around in his grave. If I saw, agree. If he saw that, A, we had a pencil, B, that Apple was deciding on all these little ancillary products that they shouldn't divide their attention with. Just all the things they used to harp about are now coming back, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. I, everybody's focused on the exterior rather than the interior right now. So for those of you younger retail traders that weren't alive when Steve Jobs was a thing, he had this thing about actually innovating uh, instead of just peripherals and and plugging more useless crap people don't need he had this idea to innovate and create products that actually bring value to people's lives and move the pendulum or it's not, move the marker a little bit forward um, every time with every new innovation so just move it the next step forward i am and, and who am i to know because i don't trade tech and martini can correct me but i don't know that a new blue phone is exactly where steve jobs would have taken us as far as one step forward. Um, no. Now, I will say, and hold on, buckle up here, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to say something positive about Apple here. I will say their recognition that the movement to um, the paid monthly subscription format that is going to give you access to a larger suite of Apple software, that is moving the marker forward. That That I'm is... Recording. Yeah, that, that is... A positive move forward. That is the only thing out of everything I've seen Apple do so far this year that I would say that's a great idea. That's an absolutely great idea. More cameras? Don't care. Different color? Don't care. New peripherals? Don't care. Subscription plan to give you access to all of Apple's suite to control you by software because a software war is coming up between mobile, PC, and console? Yes, Apple's so here's, nailed it. Here's another concept to think about, Millennial and Rita. Um, what do you think the market sentiment is going to be them switching to USB-C over the Lightning port? And 
other rumor I believe is they're not going to include a charger in the phone because they want to push the air charging. I don't know. I mean, if they're, if they're switching to USB, great. But my phone already does that. It's done that since... But forever. what you got to think about the Apple peripheral landscape is they started with the laptop going to see, then the tablet, and now the phone is the last. Yeah, I mean, I, if we're talking about the Apple crew, they were buying it either way. They didn't care what port was on it because they've already bought the I Apple agree. peripherals. Uh, I don't know that that's a huge deal. Um, as far as, like, are we luring in new... Apple users by switching to USB. I, as an Android user, that you are introducing the USB C as your port on your phone, for me, that's like a non issue of, yeah, my phone already does that. So why would I move to your phone for that? You have to show me something else, and blue isn't going to get there. I guess the reason I, I mention it is because doesn't that break them out of the Apple only exclusive type model? So the, the Lightning was something that was Apple only. And now we're moving to more of a generic USB-C and or not even going to charging at all. So we lose on those peripherals altogether. Which yeah. Or we already have seen that with the, the X and the previous models going to air charging anyway. Yeah. And now you've got your earbuds. So I like I, I don't think that this is a massive move. I don't. I Yeah, I, I know. It just it was one of those. I think if it's more of anything, it's going to be kind of oh, your phones aren't shipping with a charger outrage uh, type thing more than actual dollars. All opinion. right, guys, I'm going to be back in like 30 seconds here. I need more water. My throat is killing me. Um, but Restream, it's amazing. I, guys, I can see everything that you guys are doing on every platform everywhere. Oh, your throat's killing you? They're amazing. <sighs> I, 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 I was just, all, all that all that oh, celebrating. Damn, somebody's salty this morning. I went after her apple. He's so biased. He tells everyone to. You haven't seen it in so long. Um, I don't have it queued up and ready to go here. I, I will queue it up when I get back, but I got to go get some water. So I'll be right back. Two seconds, guys. If you have stocks you want me to look at, uh, I'm here for another 15, 20 minutes. So I'm happy to do that, guys. We're just going to break down whatever we want until then. So. Yeah, I can definitely take a look at you. Ooh, ADHD with a tier three sub. Huge thanks for that, man. That's tasty. There's a Canadian brother coming in with that tier three sub. Android, it's it's uh, Amazon with all that mm. with all that tech. 
that, that. yep that that AWS branch of Amazon people I it, it's a sleeper I think for sure. Now, which company has a contract with that? Um, anybody remember who who's working with AWS on uh, things like AI and self driving cars and stuff? Your ego is like the Hindenburg. Okay, let's. Wow. Now, for those of you that don't know, it's BlackBerry. Um, who? <laughs> Um, in regards to shoe guys, this is Steve Madden. This is the Wolf of Wall Street uh, IPO. I, on principle, I will never touch this because of Wolf of Wall Street. It's nothing personal. It's just you IPO'd with Jordan Belfort. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, BlackBerry is up eight percent today, so I mean, oh, I mean that's got to be sentiment on the Apple news because you know BlackBerry being a phone company and all. Yeah, and I mean, BlackBerry has a new phone coming out, so. It's like investing in Blockbuster. <laughs> it really likes to throw it out there, like, ah, Blockbuster. I won three times on GameStop. Up, down, and equity. <laughs> like. argue with you on GameStop. Now. BlackBerry is a phone company is not the play, by the way, boys. If you think BlackBerry is a phone company, that's not it. Uh, BlackBerry did not announce blue phones. In fact, they're, the new BlackBerry phones coming out, BlackBerry is not even making. Uh, price target on space before launch. I think it goes back up to the levels that we've seen, somewhere between 25 and 30. Uh, Amazon and Tesla. Uh, okay, look at Amazon. Yep, it's still worth like $3,500 a share. I'd love to see them do a, what is this, a reverse split, stock split. Come back down to a level that I can actually afford them because I ain't got thirty five hundred bucks kicking around. Um, man, imagine you got in on this in April when it was under two grand. As a uh, technical indicator, Apple's about to do a twenty fifty cross. Oh, hear that, guys! Apple doing a twenty fifty cross. Mm hmm. That's important. Mm hmm. I can't tell you why though. You got to search it on Investopedia. Um, it it's a feel good. <laughs> Rita, Tesla drops the price of the Model S. Yeah, I saw that this morning. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa! Well, everybody's a sub. Yay! The entire chat's a sub. Welcome, everybody. Uh Damn, man. Canada in the house. That gets an oh boy, oh boy. Am I going to get into Johnson & Johnson? No, my play is AstraZeneca. Oh, I didn't get everybody, but whoever got it, you now have the beaver. Enjoy the beaver. Play the beaver wherever you can. Um, I still think you need to, to read Sally's beaver on stream. The beaver is good. The beaver is great. I think uh, this is kind of a loose idea of Rita, like one of those money making methods or whatever. You know, it'd be really smart. I think it's kind of overdrawn or whatever, but um, for Prime Day or something similar, it doesn't have to be Amazon specifically, but it's just the easiest. But like uh, if you were to set up like a website that had like, Laser focused on the deals. Like, this is a mess. Like, this is a mess. Like, I'm just sorting through sh shit like this right now. And unless I actually pre had it like favored or some shit like that, which they don't, I don't think they have anything like that. Unless they have it pre favored, this is kind of a mess to sort through to look through all this Prime Day deals. So, I mean, it'd be just a matter of you putting up a uh, affiliate link with that and you just get 10% of what was it, 10% of whatever their purchase is. Press red flag deals doesn't have uh, any of those. They're just posting random shit. So the guy that everybody's pissed off at, this Lindsey Graham guy who's on the Supreme Court board, um, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I I know. Back in 2016, I wasn't for Barack Obama's nomination, and he didn't have the Senate. 
and that's why that didn't go through. <laughs> uh, we now have the Senate and a Republican president, and so I'm barely certain that this is going to go through. <laughs> so, Wait, what's he trying to push through? Well, he's not trying to push through anything. What he's people are asking him questions about, like why why didn't you put Obama's nomination through in the last year of his presidency? And his response, his opening statement is, um, because it was a Republican Senate under a Democrat president, and we didn't have to, so we didn't. <laughs> it, it's a matter of when, guys. It's not an if. It's an it's a when uh, on, on the Supreme Court nomination. Yeah, it, it it honestly doesn't matter. It's going through. Am I still playing waiter? Uh, yes, I, I think I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I got a couple grand in there. Oh, God damn it, Ryzen 7.30. What do I have on my board? <laughs> okay, we're still looking at the Apple phone here. Is there any other news out there? What's happening with Apple? Do we get a... Are there trending updates? Looks like Apple could be in wave three going into its launching event and earning. 130 is the target. That was, that was my target this morning um, before the... So I'm just happy to get to 125 again. Airdrop is coming. Apple Cash. Apple Digital Currency. Oh, wow. If they make their own coin, I'm getting it. The Apple coin? And you said something about Tesla, but I couldn't respond. Uh, model less reduced pricing. What about it? He was asking. He, he basically said, did, wait, did Tesla drop the price on Model S? And that was it. Yeah, they have to every time they introduce a new model. Oh boy, now we can pay a hundred thousand for the Tesla Model S Canadian. <laughs> Can't you get the Model Three? Why are you me shading on the Model S? No, I didn't get any car. Still undecided, Rita. Yeah, I mean, nobody, nobody, well, I guess it's not true because I actually like politics, but most people aren't going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm super huge fan of politics. Um, but it, it, it's a necessary evil. Somebody's got to run a shit show, right? I'm just glad it's not me. Wait, I thought the plaid was supposed to be 30k. Why is this telling me a 200,000? The plaid is a very expensive car. It's got the new Roadrunner cells in it. Oh, cool. It comes in Nicola Blue, too. Nice. Guys, check this out. Check this out. It, it comes in the Nicola Blue. No. how much this cost now yeah space would be seeing a bounce back because we did have the blue origin uh event today so there is space oh, news Nicola blue so close though yeah the the blue origin thing was today hey what the the self-driving stuff autopilot doesn't sorry full self-driving capability doesn't come 
uh, prepackaged. You have to pay ten grand for that shit. Rita, you see space this morning? No. It should put a smile on your face. We'll see. We'll see. That that launch is a big driver. I'm not going to pay 200000 for that car. Next week, that's going to be the big conversation. People are going to be talking about that like crazy heading into the 22nd. So 22nd is uh, Thursday. That gives them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week to get hyped. Uh, I, I think maybe it doesn't go to 30. Um, could Nokia bounce back on the five-year? Maybe to six bucks is my thought on Nokia. That's probably as far as I see it going. If it wins one of these Pentagon contracts, it could go to eight. Um, but I wouldn't give it much hope beyond that, from Nokia, to be honest. Uh, Ericsson, T-Mobile, Verizon would be the three 5G plays I'd consider. Don't know. Don't care. Canadian market is smaller than the state of California. Um, thoughts on avocados? I don't have thoughts. Uh, coffee and sugar would be the two. Uh, redemption uh, raised my awareness of sugar. Uh, coffee is going through a massive global shortage. Those would be the ones that I was looking at if I was going to be looking at commodities. Uh, avocados, I don't care. Um, but Saki's in Florida, so he's closer to avocados. Who's using a yardstick for what? It's half the Canadian market. One stock is half of our entire economy, and our economy is fuel based. That's not accurate. <laughs> That's like saying half of California is oil. Half the California economy is oil. That would be an errant statement. <laughs> That's big. Well, when you consider blah, 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 it's not big. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no relative. That's why you always have to compare it to GDP. Ooh, no, not GDP. We fudge our GDP oh, so hard. Listen, you didn't get the you didn't get the memo. Oh, Buffett God. is done. Buffett's days are done. Davy Day Trader is the way. Oh, okay, we're done here. <laughs> he is the hope. He is the light. The Scrabble bag will rule all. <laughs> Oozing with goodness out onto the floor. Solid gold turd. Is that what you're saying? Maybe that should be my next emote. With all these subs, I, I'm going to make me a little golden turd. What do you think, chat? Golden turd? You guys like it? You don't like it? I mean, I, I guess that's kind of my portfolio, right? A giant golden turd. I don't see anything really that should be driving BlackBerry. There's no announcement. Yeah, I wasn't trading at this time, but like 
the uh, the two thousands, uh, just before the two thousands, there was a there's a dot com crash or whatever, right? Rita, <laughs> she's on mute. She's fuming. <laughs> We broke it. All right, guys. It's 1037. It has been a wild ride today. Make sure you guys go check out Martini Rita. When she goes live, she's going to walk us through the Apple event, and she's going to check her trader bias at the door. Uh, her personal bias will go right out the windows, uh, and she will give us a completely uh, critical viewpoint of the incoming event, um, which is super important. Uh, we want to have an unbiased look at Apple and really understand what's going on there instead of uh, my biased take on Apple just being a multicolored thing. Um, if you don't know Martini Rita, you need to you need to get to know her. She's far smarter than I am. Uh, she's the lady I look to when I'm being completely insane. So uh, if I do this, I, I think that this works, right? If I is it S O, and then I do like this. So. And then whatever code you have. Is that it? It's going to pop up so her... You have to, you have to have the command. Uh, I was going to say, you, you might not have it. Bot, oh. I think the bot has to have the command in it. Correct. Oh. Well, damn. <laughs> you can advertise the Discord. 